From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening, thank you for joining us. Our top story, the Fairbanks North Star Borough Assembly examined a proposal to change how shooting ranges are regulated last night. Mike Fuss was there and has the story. Several gun ranges popping up smack dab in the middle of residential subdivisions. Some neighbors grew upset, but nothing was against code. That's part of what drove Borough Assembly members Diane Hutchison and Catherine Dodge to introduce an ordinance last night. It does not attempt at all to limit the ability of anybody to build a shooting range in this borough. What it does attempt to do is to say if you're going to build these in certain areas, you have to institute certain safety standards. The proposal changes current regulations, making distinctions between outdoor and indoor commercial gun ranges, as well as dividing archery as its own category. Once distinct, each specific group would have to meet particular guidelines. Archery and indoor ranges would be allowed outright in far more zones than previously, according to assembly members. Outdoor shooting ranges, though, would have to meet other specific regulations to be immediately approved without a vote from the Borough Planning Commission in specific areas. One that drew the most criticism during the public comment period was a half-mile restriction of building shooting lanes for many residents. That essentially makes this entire ordinance uh, impossible to be outright. You can call it, yeah, in, in theory it could be outright, sure. Uh, but try finding some property in, in the North Star Borough that's, a half, that's more than a half mile from a dwelling. It's very difficult, and believe me, because we've been trying for the past six months. Lance Roberts later proposed an amendment to decrease the restriction, which was approved after Van Lawrence edited the Roberts proposal of 1,000 feet to a quarter of a mile. An amendment to further define a grandfather clause that would allow already existing businesses to stay open regardless of the new restriction also passed. Roberts pushed forward another change that allows owners of outdoor ranges to get the permission of all residents within the restricted perimeter limits to bypass approval from the Board Planning Commission. Borough Mayor Carl Castle spoke out against the ordinance, saying it was just a band-aid to a larger problem. You're saying that people want protection from having a range in their neighborhood. They have it. Zone your neighborhood residential. So now we're creating some convoluted system and we're punishing the wrong people here. We're punishing the shooters when really it's the folks that aren't zoned properly. The Borough Assembly in the end adopted the ordinance with a majority 7 to 1 vote. Reporting from the Mona Lisa Drexler Assembly Chambers, I'm Mike Fussell. A 36-year-old Fairbanks man sentenced in Fairbanks Superior Court Thursday for shooting at, group, at a group during an argument. Now, Brian Kazevnikov was arrested last February after getting into an argument with a resident in the 1000 block of 24th Avenue and firing shots at the occupants. Two people had superficial injuries but were not hospitalized. Kazevnikov, who has 33 prior convictions and was originally charged with attempted murder, pled guilty to the lesser charge of felony third-degree assault. He will serve four years in prison. A former Fairbanks man who impersonated a police officer in order to extort money from a prostitute was sentenced in Fairbanks Courthouse yesterday. 27-year-old Jace Connors was charged in November of 2014 with felony first-degree impersonation of a public servant and felony extortion for sending threatening emails to a prostitute. According to a special prosecutor out of Anchorage, Connors was caught in a cyber investigation impersonating a police officer and trying to get the sex worker to pay taxes on her earnings. Connors' attorney told the judge his client was only trying to keep the worker out of town and was not extorting money. Connors, who now lives in New Mexico, was sentenced to 30 days in jail and one year probation suspended. A toke man was sentenced in Fairbanks Superior Court earlier this week. 60-year-old Guy Matthews was charged with misconduct involving weapons, assault, and driving under the influence for an incident that occurred May of last year. According to court documents, Matthews fired a gun into a sporting goods store while having an argument with his wife. When troopers arrived, they learned that Matthews had been locked out by the manager because he was under the influence. He fled to the woods, but troopers soon located him and found he was carrying a 22 handgun that matched the description of the one fired into the store. Matthews was sentenced to two and a half years with four years of probation. When we come back, the health insurance deadline is just around the corner and Fairbanks has a way for people to get the help they need. We'll have the details. Also, beautiful music was being played by the Fairbanks Symphony Orchestra this afternoon and over a thousand students attended. Those stories and more when we return. Stay with us. 
Welcome back. Sunday is the deadline for people to get signed up for health insurance to avoid penalties under federal law. Monty Bowen reports that help will be provided at a special event tomorrow in South Fairbanks. Those that do not enroll in health insurance for 2016 and do not qualify for an exemption could face much higher penalties. The penalty amount increases to $695 per uncovered adult. The event tomorrow is at the J.P. Jones Center. It's from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. It's at 2400 Rickard Street. Myself and colleagues from the Resource Center for Parents and Children and the Alaska Primary Care Association will be available to provide the most accurate information, the most up-to-date information um, about getting health insurance for, the, for 2016. Also today, another hitch. Alaska insurance regulators have suspended Moda Health Plan from accepting new or renewed policies in the state, citing concerns with the Oregon-based company's financial situation. Moda is one of the only two companies offering individual insurance policies for Alaskans on the federally facilitated health insurance marketplace. Moda's president said they don't intend to get back into the Oregon or Alaska markets, leaving Primera as the only available company in Alaska. As Primera is the only provider remaining in the individual marketplace in Alaska, this means that new enrollees to the individual market must enroll with them. Moda policies that have already been written will remain in effect as long as the policyholder continues to pay their premium but cannot be renewed. Those conducting the workshop tomorrow at the J.P. Jones Center will make sure they have the latest information from the state to work with when signing people up. This is Marty Bowen reporting. Officials with the Fairbanks North Star Borough School District say they received over 2,000 responses to a survey they posted earlier this January. The district's online probe asked parents how they feel regarding implementing a kindergarten through eighth grade education model for interior schools. The K-8 model is part of the Fairbanks Board of Education's strategic plan to provide students with more educational options. If implemented, some middle and elementary schools would be converted to accommodate kindergarten through 8th grade students. Earlier this month, the district was given the green light from the school board to explore the feasibility of a K-8 model in Fairbanks. Superintendent Karen Gaborik says the district is studying transportation, food services and budgeting logistics that would fit in with the new model. She adds, she adds the parent survey will be sifted through by a dedicated work group which, is, which will present its findings to the school board this spring. I will make recommendations to the school board and I see that playing out in different scenarios like here's one possibility of ways that we can move, here are some other possibilities. We could certainly go back to a K-8 magnet possibility and then, and, and then you know, we just look at what our overall goals are with the strategic plan and decide what direction we want to go. More than a thousand elementary students from the interior gathered inside the Davis Concert Hall today to watch Peter and the Wolf put on by the Fairbanks Symphony Orchestra. The orchestra is a nonprofit organization comprised of 70 to 80 musicians. The children were able to watch as the performers showed off each instrument and explained how each made different sounds. Anyone can try out for the orchestra, so it showcases a diverse group of instrumentalists, including university students, teachers, local musicians, and even high school students. The Fairbanks Symphony Orchestra hosts several events throughout the year, including the C-Note Poker Tournament. That will take place this Saturday. This tournament will feature an orchestra performance and a grand prize of two round trip tickets on Alaska Airlines. This Saturday, January 30th, the Fairbanks Symphony is going to host its third annual C-Note Poker Tournament. It's really a fun event where poker players in the city who'd like to come out and those that like to support the Fairbanks Symphony can come out and play for prizes. There will be both door prizes and otherwise prizes. One of our top uh, awards this year is two round trip tickets on Alaska Airlines. All right. Hockey and hoops were the order of the day in interior sports yesterday, so Scoop is up next with sports, and he has highlights and reaction from the Ice Dogs, UAF, and high school basketball. Stay with us. Welcome back, Interior Alaska. Scoop Clark in here for Joe Cook. Time to get your weekend started right with the Friday Sportscast. He, Joe Cook, by the way, he's out on assignment. Let's get to it. The Fairbanks Ice Dogs stuck to, to cancer and stuck it to the Brown Bears last night. Before the game, a local cancer survivor came out for the ceremonial puck drop to start game one of the three-game series. 
Kenai couldn't survive the odd man rush from Fairbanks as Clay Cross finds Clay Caden Cahill ugh, for a beautiful goal to start the game. After Kenai tied the game, Logan Coombs finishes off another rush, beating Nick Nast with a nasty glove side shot to give Fairbanks a 2 to 1 lead. The Ice Dogs got down on the ice during intermission with a flash mob dance. They did more dancing as they would score three more times. Reggie Lutz scored twice, and CJ Booth makes 16 saves as the Ice Dogs take game one 5 to 1. Despite the win, they want to be better on the power play. You know, we didn't move the puck as fast as we needed to, and that's I think why we didn't do very well on the power play. And against a team like this, who's pretty aggressive, we have to move the puck quickly to find open space and open area and to shoot pucks at the net. I know that I haven't been playing very well recently, and you know, I just came out with the with confidence and just told myself during the game, kept speaking to myself, telling myself to stop the puck. That's all I had to do was stop the puck. The UAF men's basketball team had an important game on Thursday night. They hosted the Seattle Pacific Falcons, and both teams came in tied for the third place in the GNAC. Both coaching staffs participated in Coaches vs. Co Cancer as they sported sneakers to help the American Cancer Society raise awareness. The Falcons were aware of what was at stake as they put the ball in the basket. They led Alaska by 22 at the half on 58% shooting. Mitch Penner had a game-high 29 points for the Falcons. UAF did rally in the second half, cutting that deficit to six, but SPU made enough shots to hold off the Nooks. They win 79-69 and UAF drops to fifth in the GNAC with a 7-4 record. They are 13-6 overall. The women's team was unsuccessful on Thursday as well. They lost 46-72 to Montana State Billings, who are now tied with UAA for the top spot in the league. The Nooks were only down 10 going into the fourth quarter, but the Yellow Jackets went on a 17 to nothing to pull away. Jordan Wilson had 20 points and 7 rebounds to lead Alaska. She extends her career and conference best 20 straight games with double-digit scoring. UAF will be back on the road next Thursday at Western Oregon. The West Valley Wolfpack and Lathrop Malamutes met on the court for the first time this season. Lathrop was the home team on Thursday night for this MAC rivalry. Lathrop came back from an 11-point deficit in the fourth quarter and made it a four-point game, but Daniel Hornbuckle hit a big shot to the pack up six. He had a game-high 24. However, Jeremiah Handy hit three of his team-high 19 points for Lathrop to answer, and it was 55-52 West Valley with a minute left. But Brandon Bones Joyner gets a clutch block and a steal to stop the Lathrop comeback. West Valley wins 60-54. But when we have our whole team, like we're, we're like one of the best teams in the state. So, and Bones hitting shots that helps a lot. And when Isaiah gets on, that's just a whole different animal. And then Mingo being back now, that's like another level of hustle. So it's real good to have our whole team here. The girls' game was just as close as the Wolfpack and Lathrop met for the second time. West Valley was up 53-47 in the fourth quarter as Ruthie Hebert scored a game-high 26 points. But Lathrop went on a 10 to nothing run. Cheyenne Dibert scored and got the foul, but she thought it was on her, but it wasn't, so she was happy. Jana Hajdukovic also scored two of her 22 during that run. Lathrop made some key stops down the stretch and hit critical free throws to complete the comeback and win 66-57. Lathrop is 2-0 over West Valley so far and get the all-important conference win. It was a great defensive battle for both teams. We both uh, got out played really good defense. We both made uh, good changes from the last game. They wanted to prove that it wasn't an upset. It was the best team won. Uh, and again, the night the best team won. I know it doesn't seem like it because we have a lot of returners, but it's a new team, new dynamics on our team. And so we're just um, learning to trust that if I leave this position, somebody's coming right behind me to take over this position. In other games, Thunder Mountain defeats North Pole 71-55. Taylor DeAngelis scores 19 to the lead the Patriots in the loss. Monroe loses to Palmer on the road 41-50. Former Ram Mike Cluding led the Moose with a game-high 27 points. Jeremiah Bailey scored 14 for the Rams. Monroe plays Nikiski tonight and Grace Christian on Saturday. And we close the sportscast with the play of the week. Our system was overwhelmed with votes, but after working out the kinks, the top play comes from... Monroe. That's right, sophomore guard Gavin Jackson's career-high 25-point game at Delta in the Dean Cummings title game against the Huskies is the play of the week. Jackson hit seven threes to lead Monroe to the title, and he was named tournament MVP. Gavin Action Jackson gets the POTW. To pick the next play of the week, watch for the I-5 Interior Top 5 plays on Monday during the weekend recap. And that will do it for sports tonight. Thanks for watching. Mike Schultz is next with your weekend weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time.
Hey everyone, welcome back in to a Friday night. Mike Schultz will be once again talking about the weather. Woke up this morning to a little light dusting of snow. We forecasted it, but it didn't amount to a whole lot and just was basically cloudy all day long. As far as what's going on for the weather tonight, here's what we're going to be talking about. And a little cooler temperatures moving in through Sunday, but nothing really strong maybe just about below 20 degrees and that's about it for this time of year that's incredible elsewhere we're going to be looking at uh, no more snow expected into the next part of well actually the la almost the latter part of next week the way it looks right now in incredible and no air quality problems to report today that's good so you folks in north pole can finally breathe a, a sigh of relief and i mean breathe too here's what's going on on the satellite and radar you can see a little bit of activity moving in from the southwest but it's just not really making a whole lot of headway in toward the interior and then over southeast Alaska more rain is uh, forecast to move in across there while the rest of the state looks uh, fairly dry for the most part. Now as far as what's going on across the rest of the state there's what it looks like over southeast Alaska catch a can 40 degrees and some showers today just cloudy skies at Juneau around the Anchorage Bowl mainly partly cloudy and 35 degrees Kodiak uh, some some light showers and uh, 34 a little rain falling around the Cold Bay area, 37 across the Aleutian chain, Bethel at 28 and 24 degrees at Nome. Now north of the, uh, the uh, north slope, 6 degrees at Barrow. That's 6 above. That's unheard of this time of year. And Fort Yukon, cloudy skies and 12 degrees. Lower 48 weather and big storm moving across the Pacific Northwest. A lot of cold air in behind this system. And it's going to be expected to be dropping down further to the south, which means Southern California will be getting into the... Uh, opportunity for more rain and uh, snow at the higher elevations. Elsewhere across the eastern half of the country, things have quieted down quite a bit. You don't see a whole lot going on. Now, as far as the uh, overall situation for Southern California, starting looks like Sunday and, uh, and then continuing into Monday, a real mix of weather there, rain and wind and snow at the higher elevations. And that snow will be moving into the central plains and become possibly a full-fledged blizzard from uh, Denver onto the northeast. Why? Well, because the jet stream is taking a big drop down to the south. Whenever you see that happening, that pulls all the cold air down and uh, that becomes a real mixing pot for a, a major storm to develop and that's expected to happen. Our uh, weather fact for tonight is pretty interesting. In fact, uh, how about uh, 1989, Cantwell, Alaska, gusty winds and severe cold temperatures combined to make a wind chill factor of 120 degrees below zero. And by the way, it was 41 degrees below zero on this date here in Fairbanks in 1989. How about that? And as far as uh, thanking Mount McKinley Bank, well, we do appreciate them uh, being our sponsor. And next week, we're going to be visiting with the students from University Park Elementary School uh, for the kids' weather. All right, here's what's going on as far as weather is concerned across the northern sections of Alaska tomorrow. Snow showers expected at Barrow and also possibly at Fort Yukon. And even a better chance of snow in the Nome area, a couple inches uh, expected there. Here in the interior, very quiet weather pattern going on, just partly cloudy skies for Fairbanks, mostly cloudy skies at Healy and also in the Delta Junction region. Over southeast Alaska, looks like uh, partly cloudy skies for Juneau and just mostly cloudy skies in the Ketchikan area, so the rain will be stopping there. Over the southwest part of the state, looking at rain all day in Cold Bay and rain and snow at Bethel with scattered showers at Kodiak. And if you're heading down to the Anchorage Bowl. Well, we're looking at cloudy skies at Anchorage, partly cloudy skies in Homer, and sunny skies expected in Valdez with a high temperature of about 31 at Valdez. It's a, a Friday night, which means it's time for our Winter Trails Report. Brought to you by the good folks at Beaver Sports, and it should be a great weekend for all outdoor activities. Now, the slopes will be a little uh, slick because of the ice, and there has not been any fresh snow except for the light snow we had last night. Cross-country trails will also be very fast. And once again, snow machiners, uh, be cautious where you're doing your snow machining because there is still a good potential for avalanche. Keep that in mind. Okay, here's what's going on at the airport right now. Uh, the, today's high was 25, the low last night 4, the record high 35, 1994, down to 58 below in 1933. That's uh, pretty darn cold. And your sunrise and sunset, 6 hours and 35 minutes, a gain of 6 minutes from yesterday. And our forecast for tonight, cloudy skies, but warmer in the hills. Again, an inversion, but not a, bad enough to uh, create any air problems. 5 degrees for the overnight low. Tomorrow's forecast calling for 12 degrees. Quite a bit cooler than today and uh, just mainly partly cloudy skies. The five-day outlook, again, temperatures right around the 20-degree mark for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, dropping down just a little bit by next Thursday, but still way warm, warmer than you expect this time of year. Overnight lows also right around 5 degrees, pretty consistent on the uh, 
the low temperatures there. And our photograph for tonight, another beautiful sunset. This one's seen by Karen Garrity and nice colors there. And as always, if you have a photograph to share, send it to photos at KTVF11.com. Thanks, Mike. That will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. As always, we are glad you could join us. Tonight in NBC Nightly News, will 22 top secret emails released from Hillary Clinton's private server affect her campaign? That's up next with Lester Holt. Don't forget to tune in to the weekdays, weekend's only newscast at 6 and 11 with Katie Looper and sports with Fussell the Muscle. <laughs> from all of us here at the News Center, have a great, good night and a great weekend. <laughs>